In this video, we'll explore how to create TypeScript types from our GraphQL schema or API endpoint. We've covered in other videos how you can use GraphQL Code Generator to automatically generate code for things like Apollo Client or Urkel. But we want to create the types for our API and their operations. If we have a look at the documentation for the GraphQL Code Generator, we can see how we can get started. To install a project, we'll need to install GraphQL and GraphQL Code Gen CLI inside of our project. Once this is installed, we can then run the GraphQL Code Gen init command. We can use mpx GraphQL Code Gen init. It's here the GraphQL code generator will ask us a few things about our project. You can select whether you want to create types for your backend or for a front end with Angular, React, or many other frameworks. I'm going to choose that we're going to be building an application with another framework or vanilla JavaScript. You'll then want to give it the path for your schema. This can be a local.graphql file that contains all of your GraphQL schema, or you can pass it a remote URL, which it'll inspect to create those types. I'm going to use an API that is online and it's fully hosted and outside of our project. Then I'll want to define where my operations and fragments are stored. I have these inside of my project in the root GraphQL folder. We then have some files that end in .graphql. So let's update this glob. If you wanted to accept files that end in GQL and GraphQL, you can format the glob like this. Now we'll select the plugins that we want to install. For this video, we'll just cover installing the TypeScript plugin and the TypeScript operations. This will create types for our API and the types for our queries and mutations, as well as the fragments. Then we can specify where we want these types to be stored. And then you can see here that it has a directory source generated GraphQL as the default value. Let's customize this and type types.ts. Then you can choose whether you want to generate an introspection file. We'll click no for now. Then we'll want to save the configuration that we've just defined here in the CLI to a file called codegen.yml. Then instead of package.json, you need to decide what script you'll use to run the codegen. We'll just call this code gen. This is now going to fetch all of the plugins that we specified and install them inside of the package JSON. Now let's go ahead and install all of those dependencies. If we see inside the root of our project, we can see we have a new code gen file. This is containing all of the configuration that's needed when we run that code gen script. Before we run the code gen command, let's go ahead and comment out the TypeScript operations. We'll have a look at that in just one second. First, let's run the npm run code gen script. You should see that everything was successful and we have a file types.ts in the root of our project. If we have a look inside of here, we can see that we have some exported types that match all of the different API types defined in the GraphQL API endpoint that we provided to the config.yml. If we scroll through here, we should see that all of our queries, types, scalars, and anything else such as enums are exported from this file. If your API has descriptions, those will also be fetched to improve the developer experience when working with these fields in your application. As we scroll through this file, we can see that we have some input types also exported, as well as anything such as mutations or the payloads that come back from any of those mutations. Now, everything we see here are the TypeScript types for our GraphQL API. But if you remember, we commented out the TypeScript operations. What this plugin allows us to do is take the queries and mutations we have inside of our project and create all of the different types for those as well. So now that we've added back the TypeScript operations plugin, we can then run the GraphQL code generator inside of this project. If we go back to the types.ts file, we should now see some additional exports. We should see that we have our query exported as well as the different variables that that takes. We also have the fragments as well that we can use to import throughout our application. So we've got full type safety end to end. I should also mention that you can generate multiple files and run different plugins on those. So for the file types2.ts, we can only run the TypeScript plugin. Now, if we run the codegen command, we can see we have types and types2. We can see for the types2 file that we no longer have any TypeScript operations exported. And that's because we specified in the codegen that we only wanted to run the one plugin. So hopefully this has given you enough to get started with using GraphQL code generator and generating types for your GraphQL APIs. Whether those APIs are local or remote, this should be enough to get started to introduce full end-to-end -end type safety with your projects.